Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Well, I just want to do a uh, continue on video from the one we did uh, a couple of weeks ago when I was away. Um, I've been back for a couple of days and had a chance to get into the shack. Um, but I've just got to disappear again um, this weekend for three weeks, so um, hopefully I'll get a little bit more done. But anyway, what I wanted to do today was just to um, have a, a quick chat about where I've got to um, in trying to hunt down uh, the source of and to... to uh, mitigate some of the um, the rotary encoder noise that was coming through. Um, firstly, um, thank you very much for those who provided um, some comments on the last video, uh, some ideas and some suggestions to look at. That was certainly very useful, uh, and I followed up on, on all of those. Um, and I also want to say too that these videos here are, are not tutorials in any way, shape, or form. Um, I, I'm you know I don't know this stuff. Uh, this is purely a video log of. Or what I'm playing around with and sort of where I've got to so please um, don't don't take them as um, tutorials in any way shape or form anyway so um, had a good uh, read around the Bitex forums um, there was quite a bit uh, of ideas and suggestions and solutions that um, a number of people have tried with the Bitex transceivers um, I note in, in many cases um, some of those fixes worked for some didn't work for others um, but I've certainly tried a lot of those here. Um, in no particular order, um, some things that I tried, um, I tried running the SI5351 off a separate um, battery with its own uh, dedicated 5-volt uh, regulator. Um, that made no change at all. Um, I also tried running the um, audio amplifier off its own separate 12-volt supply, uh, this battery here. Um, no change. I tried running the um, Tensi and the screen off its own separate battery, um, again with the same 5 volt regulator, uh, and actually it made the situation considerably worse, which is interesting. Um, so suffice to say, running the three main components, um, the amplifier, the SI5351 and the, the Tensi slash screen, off separate um, supplies or independent supplies uh, didn't make any change at all so that was uh, some good data points there um, I tried for uh, all three running some um, inductors on the um, VCC line coming in with decoupling capacitors on either side uh, as well as um, a uh, 50 and also a 10 ohm resistor uh, on the VCC line coming in with decoupling capacitors um, no change um, I, I note the the audio amplifier already has that in here with a 10 ohm resistor there with a couple of 100 uh, nanofarad caps, um, so that's already decoupled. Um, so yeah, that was that was interesting. What else? What else? What else? Uh, disconnected the audio uh, going into the um, Tensi. So in other words, trying to split the circuit in half to work out what was going on. Uh, no change. Um, but when I disconnected the audio going into the amplifier, uh, the noise was killed straight away. So definitely not something coming down the, the VCC line or the power line of the audio amplifier and finding its way out. It's certainly something coming in through the audio input. Um, which, yeah, okay, full stop. Right, so um, some of the things that did work... Um, when I reconnected up the audio lines back up to the SI, uh, so again the SBL ones, I also elected to connect at this end um, the two, uh, the shield, so the shield back down to earth. Um, so now it's shielded at both ends, uh, and that had a marked that that um, reduced the, um, the the tuner noise quite considerably, which was interesting. Um, so I definitely left those connected. Uh, I also changed the 5 volt regular over the back here and did what I should have done in the first place really um, with a 100 nanofarad capacitor on the 12 volt input uh, 100 nanofarad on the 5 volt output as well as in parallel with that a, a 400 microfarad um, uh, capacitor um, just to provide some decoupling there um, yeah so that's pretty well the configuration at the moment and it's pretty good. So I'm just tuning around there, and it's 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 there is a little bit of noise there, but it's certainly a lot lot less than it was. 
and and I must say it's at a point now where I'm quite happy just to leave it uh, as it is and to now start moving forward uh, on the software for the um, turning the what is now a, currently a direct con conversion receiver into a um, into a single sideband or a single frequency um, receiver. So that'll be the next steps when I get back. Start playing around with the Hilbert transforms uh, using that Iowa Hills software to design that um, with whatever parameters we look at and, um, and, and playing around with that. Again, um, working into a receiver first and get that up and running uh, and then leverage off um, the software to, to turn around and, and convert that into a transmitter, uh, which will be pretty straightforward. So just checking my notes here, I, uh, I made quite extensive uh, sort of dot points of uh, the various things that I tried. I think I've covered off most of them. Um, here, inductors and resistors, decoupling capacitors, uh, nothing too else I tried. Um, uh, there are some suggestions about shielding the rotary encoder um, wires, which which I did here. Um, it's, it's it's shielded at one end. Uh, uh, I would say little or no no change there. So, uh, but I've just left it in situ. It's nice and a bit more tidier. Uh, another suggestion that came out of the BitX forums was keeping or was a shielding the. Um, the speaker or the volume uh, cabling, um, I already had that shielded, so uh, all I did there to try and see if that was causing any issues um, was to disconnect the volume pot at this end and to have a, a, a pot here with very short wires. Um, I did that before I disconnected the, um, the audio input, so uh, it's not something that's coming from within the audio amplifier, it's something coming into it. So. Uh, funny old thing that didn't make any change, which uh, in hindsight now um, makes sense. Uh, what else, what else, what else? So I think that's pretty well it actually. So I just tried decoupling capacitors on all the, the various devices, separate power supplies on all the devices, shielding. Um, I've tried to um, have wires crossing at 90 degrees um, and not having too many things, if I can, running in parallel. Um, with, with separation where I can um, and I think the bottom line is with all of those changes some were quite marked uh, or quite um, not significant but certainly noticeable a la the, um, the earthing of these two others I guess uh, in, uh, in aggregate and, and added together ha have resulted in really um, quite a, a significant reduction there in the noise so, uh, so that's good so I think um, like I say I'll live with that for now um, it's not perfect, but it's certainly um, a lot better than it was. Right, well, I'm going to say 73 is here and start putting some thought into some software. And like I say, when I get back off this next trip, uh, we'll get into some software engineering and, and looking at the Hilbert transforms. Okay, cheers all, and we'll see you next time.